So let us start with the Shanti Mantra. Om Bhadram Karne Bhe Shrinoyama Deva Bhadram Pashe Maksha Bhirya Jatra Sthirai Rangai Tushtuvagam Sastanu Bhihi Vyashema Deva Hitai Yadayuhu Swastina Indro Vridhashrava Swastina Pusha Vishwaveda Swasti Nastar Kshyo Arishtanemi Swasti No Brihaspatir Dadhatu Om Shanti 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 So we've been studying the Mandukya Karika and uh, today, which will be the last class for the uh, season in Mandukya, other classes will continue, but the Vedanta study group is meeting for the last time this season. So, I will give a summary, we will point to the essential teaching once more, then I would like to interact, work with you. So, what is the essential teaching? Mandukya is Vedanta, so basically what is Vedanta? I was in, um, in St. Louis this Sunday and the Swami there, Swami Chetanananji, he gave this topic for me, what is Vedanta? He said that when he invites monks to speak, Swamis to speak, he likes to ask this question to them and he wants to compile. He's been doing this for decades now. <laughs> he will give each of them the subject, what is Vedanta? And let's see what they say. So I decided, I just ask myself the question again and again and get the answers and put them together and present it. So that's what I did. That's a different talk. I'm not going to give it this, give this here. But do listen to it. I'm sure they will put it up on YouTube someday. You know, you know. It's already up. Yes. Oh, that's fast. <laughs> They're faster than us. What's the Western? You know, they've got the drop on us. <laughs> so, uh, what is Vedanta? I asked it seven times, the question. If you look at the talk, I've asked the question seven times. And each time a deeper and deeper answer you get. But anyway, Vedanta is basically the teachings of the uh, Upanishads. Vedanta nama Upanishad pramanam. That's the definition we memorized when we were novices. Vedanta is the spiritual knowledge you get from the Upanishads. Among the Upanishads, you get a list of 108 Upanishads. Basically, 10 or 11 Upanishads are considered major Upanishads because Shankaracharya um, selected those to write commentaries on. And out of these 108 Upanishads, the Mandukya has the pride of the place because it is said to be the most powerful of them all. It is the smallest with only, with only 12 mantras. It's the smallest of them all and said to be the most powerful. I had shared with you a story about um, Ramachandra being asked by Hanuman. Hanuman asks Ramachandra, um, how, does, how do I get moksha, liberation, salvation? And Ramachandra said uh, that Mandukyam ekam eva alam mumukshunam vimuktai The Mandukya Upanishad is enough for the liberation of those who seek liberation. Of course the trick is there in that those who seek liberation. <laughs> to, to what extent are we really seeking? But anyway, Mandukya is, is enough. And then Ramachandra goes on to say that if you don't get liberation by the study of the Mandukya Upanishad, by the wisdom of the Mandukya Upanishad, then he gives a list of 108 Upanishads. So you better, better get it. And today is sort of your last chance. No, it isn't. <laughs> it isn't. We just we keep on uh, repeating the same thing. It's not learning a newer and newer things each day, but it is actually staying with that same knowledge. If you hear about it, study about it, understand it, and then stay with it until it becomes a living reality for you. That's, that's Vedanta, basically. So, what does Mandukya say? Just like any of the Upanishads, it says that by knowledge of the self, one gets liberation. By the way, even the word liberation has a very clear connotation here. Liberation means liberation from suffering. Dukkha nivritti ananda prapti. Um, Transcendence of suffering, attainment of ultimate bliss, true fulfillment, true and lasting fulfillment. 
to attain what human life is meant to attain, to realize what, what life is, what we are here for. The purpose of life is accomplished um, in enlightenment. That is liberation. And of course, in a more traditional sense, in Indian philosophy, you talk about the cycle of birth and death. So liberation is also liberation from cycle of birth and death. All of this is accomplished according to Vedanta by knowledge of the self. By knowledge of the self means by realizing who or what I am. And to the immediate reaction, I know what I am. It's the most obvious thing for me. The answer is no, you don't. You really do not. What we know, we, what we think we are, Vedanta first questions that and shows that we really do not know ourselves what we truly are. And therein lies the problem. This ignorance of our real nature is the problem. And uh, knowledge of our real nature, it, uh, just close that, is the solution. Each Upanishad has its own way. Mandukya has a very unique approach. The approach of the three states of waking, dreaming and deep sleep. Remember, Mandukya is not about waking, dreaming and deep sleep. It's about what we truly are. It just uses, this is a way. Waking, dreaming and deep sleep is a way. You see, what the Upanishads do and what Vedanta does is, it takes some aspect of our experience and using that aspect, inquires inquires into it and the purpose of the inquiry is to show what we truly are. Once you know that and it becomes a living reality for you, your problem is solved. That is liberation, that is enlightenment. So what is the Mandukya's approach? Waking, dreaming and deep sleep. We know this, I just put it down on the board again. So the self with a small s let me see. The self, with, this is not very clear, right? Let me use the black one. The self with a small s. Self with a small s. And the world. I'm using approximate English words. You know, the Sanskrit words would be Abhimani and Prapancha or Prameya and um, 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 Pramata, things like that. We'll see. But let's use the words which we are comfortable with. Self with a small s means what I think myself to be. And the world means what I experience. I could have just as well written subject and object. And then the state. Again, in Sanskrit, Avastha. Avastha. Let me write the Sanskrit. All right, I will not write more here because in any case it won't be visible to many people at the back. But I just re I'll be reading it out, whatever I'm writing, so don't worry. And you know, you have all gone through this again and again. So let's just fill it up very quickly. We are the, right now we, I am the waker. Waker. Is this visible, the waker? And even if it's, don't be confused, it's not visible, don't be confused. It's you. I'm talking about you right now. The waker. And you have the waker's world. Waker's world. And this state is called waking. This is what we are right now. You, yes. What, what's that? Okay, thank you. Improved. The part of the waking world. Yeah, that's what the waking world can give us. A better marker, a better life. That's the promise. Um, some better food, a better gadget, better life, better health, better body, a better relationship, better. But a part of the waking world. All that we have in this world, whatever you think you are, all your problems, your hopes and aspirations, your life story, all of it is you the waker. And, and your world, the world which you experience, this universe, the waking world. And this state is called waking. You will say, what else is there? But no, Mandukya takes a wider view of human life. Next, we fall asleep and we have, we dream. A dreamer. Yeah, it's much better. This one. Dreamer. When I am the dreamer, by dreamer I mean, uh, not the political dreamer thing. <laughs> Dreamer means I, when I'm dreaming, whatever I think myself to be. 
that I, the person in my own dreams, and I have the dream world, whatever I'm dreaming about, dream world, and this state is called dream. And of course, it feels not like a dream, it feels like real, it feels like waking. When I'm in the dream, whatever my dream is, I am there and I have a world and things are going on there. Sometimes they are uh, scary, terrible dreams, nightmares. Sometimes they are nice dreams, but whatever it is, it's only after coming back into the waking world that I say, oh, that was a dream. But in the dream, I had an experience. I was a subject knowing an object. So that's another way I experience myself. It's still a small self. And another way I experience myself, we give it no credit, but it's actually a pretty interesting state. And that is the deep sleeper. I'll call it the sleeper. Although in dreams also we are sleeping. And it's a, what do I call it? A deep, it's not a deep sleep world. I call it the merged blankness, the deep sleep blankness. A blankness, let's call it. Sometimes I call it a darkness. But you understand what we mean by this. What you experience in your deep sleep. Just blank. I am experiencing a blank even that thought is not there. The object is not distinct. The subject is not distinct. Here the subject and the object are distinct. You know who you are or what you are, where you stop and where the world begins. The world, stops, world begins here. I stop here at the tip of my fingernails. And from there onwards is the world. This is my waking experience. In dream also we have a similar experience. But in deep sleep we don't have a similar experience. We have just blank. And so only after waking up I say that, oh, I was in deep sleep. I knew nothing. Uh, I was um, absolutely at, at rest. But that's also an experience. If it was not, we, after waking we couldn't have spoken about it. So that's called deep sleep. Just for, just for um, completion, this waking state is called a gross state. Gross in the state because we use physical sense organs to experience a physical world. This is called a gross state. And the dream experience is called a subtle state. Why? Because it's all in my mind. And remember, gross and subtle only from the waking state. In only the waking state, I can make the distinction. Oh, that was all in my mind, the dream. And this is physical. That's the way we say. See, Vedanta is very simple that way. Just stick to your common sense notions. At least begin there. Then very soon it will become very uncommon. But you begin with your common sense notions. The way you feel, the way you experience. Oh, this is out there. And I'm seeing it with my eyes. I'm hearing with my ears. I'm touching with my skin. This is gross. Gross means physical. And that dream, though it felt like this, it was all in my mind, so subtle. And the deep sleep state is called causal. Causal means karana. Because why causal? Because it is, it is like the cause of these two. How is the deep sleep the cause of these two? Cause means the material from which everything else comes up. Now, can you look at your deep sleep like that? that um, everything was there because if in deep sleep now it's all erased if it's all erased we wouldn't have come back if the hard disk was erased if you boot up the computer the old data wouldn't be there but you boot up the computer the old data is there it all comes back when we wake up in the morning from deep sleep it all comes back for better or worse it's still there yeah. so everything was there in the deep sleep though it was not distinctly perceived not distinctly perceived all merged together, that is called the causal state, like a seed. It sprouts again in dreams and in waking. So it's called causal. Before I go any further, let me quickly give the Sanskrit terms for what I have written here. They are more precise. Self is called abhimani, the ego, what I think myself to be. And world is called prapancha, the world, literally the world. State is called avastha. Waker, waker's world and the waking state. Waker, can you, anybody tell me? Vishwa. More confidence? Vishwa, I won't scold you. <laughs> waker's world, Jagrat Prapancha. 
and the waking state jagrat and the gross means here sthula so this is sthula avastha uh, state means avastha dreamer taijasa and the dream world swapna prapancha the world of dreams it's not just one world we keep generating many worlds in dreams dream state swapna avastha and subtle means sukshma you can call it swapna avastha or sukshma sleeper deep sleeper pragya pragya the deep sleep blankness is called sushupti prapancha um, and then deep sleep itself is called sushupti avastha causal karana karana you can call it karana prapancha sukshma prapancha sthula prapancha this is called prapancha traya jagrat swapna sushupti so this is sanskrit the board is quickly becoming filled up and crowded don't worry what vedanta does is uh, it tells you none of this is important <laughs> we think this is important our samsara is this this is samsara if i were to say put samsara one word to describe all this would be samsara in fact i'll come to you this part is seems to be this part seems to be important right this is what we consider to be real waker waker's world and waking state and the dream is important to my psychotherapist at the most but otherwise no no otherwise not and deep sleep nobody bothers about poor deep sleep <laughs> but this is what we experience and this is my samsara and vedanta says this is an appearance there is something underlying it which you should know uh, before we, we go on uh, whenever i try to explain this to my friends the first thing they say is well where is illusion you know where is a drug state uh, where yeah. is a, so I, i was wondering if we could sure. identify that somehow right now you can have you can have a multiplicity of states actually there are many others like um, uh, ecstatic states or the comatose states or somebody in multiple drugged states you know mystic states all of them will be somewhere here in between you, you can include all of them why they are not mentioned here the reason is those are extraordinary states which are which are not um, which is not normal which is not normal which is not common to everybody i don't i am not in coma right now i am not high right now um, most of the time i am not we, we, most of us do not share those experiences and remember all these are just are are, are just that's all right they are just to give us a foundation for inquiry right it's not the states which are important remember what i told you Upanishad Bandukya is not really about waking, dreaming, and sleeping. Uh, though it seems to be about waking, dreaming, and sleeping, it's not. It's just using waking, dreaming, and sleeping to point to something beyond them. What is this waking, dreaming, and sleeping? In fact, open. Uh, this is called in technical language anuvada. And the word anuvada in Indian languages means translation, but it's not translation. Anuvada means a repetition of what we are already experiencing. what has the upanishad done here it has not taught us anything new it may seem to be oh we are learning some vedanta here not at all this is exactly what you would report your experiences to be right so that's why a lot of other things are left out because they don't contribute anything to the discussion because it's not about that it's not even about attaining any extraordinary sense state of perception it's not even attaining any ordinary state of perception neither ordinary nor extraordinary that which is having these experiences if we are interested in that then why have we taken these because they are common to our everybody can claim them what's the point its inquiry can start only when the teacher and the student have something to talk about in common right uh, we all experience waking we all experience dreaming we all experience deep sleep enough we can start there that's sort of co- a comprehensive description of our um usual lives and if you want to plug in other states upanishad considers them in fact it will say ubhayata pragyam in the seventh mantra somewhere in between yes that also you can you can add but the point will still remain the same we'll see um now what is the upanishad going to say 
take the, the example of the uh, ornaments. So here you have a, suppose this is a golden bracelet and this is a golden necklace and this is a golden um, uh, a tiara. Bracelet, necklace, tiara. And then somebody comes and tells you, these are all appearances, there is a reality which underlies them. There is a reality out of which they are made and that is gold and that is what we are going to talk about. So if you ask for more states of consciousness, it is like adding more ornaments. Can you add a ring? Can you add a, um, what, what other ornaments are there? <laughs> I am running out of ornaments very fast. Anklets. Uh, and uh, so uh, various, if you plug in more ornaments, it still would not change the fact that gold is the reality of those ornaments. That is what we are interested in. Not a comprehensive discussion of Tiffany's catalog. Yeah. <laughs> but the reality of what those things are made of. So, um, and the reality is this, what is called the fourth. Yeah, I forgot one thing. The Upanishad talks about aspects. In English, let us say aspects. Aspects of what? The self. First aspect, second aspect, third aspect, and the fourth aspect. This is the real self, capital S, which the Upanishad wants to tell us about. And in Sanskrit, it is called Turiya. Turiya means nothing more than four. The number four, the numeral four. Turiya means that in Sanskrit. Chaturtham, Turiya. The four. This is what the uh, Upanishad wants to talk, talk about actually. The first, second and third aspects. In Sanskrit it is called Pada. Upanishad starts with Soyam Atma Chatushpat. That very self has four aspects. Three of which are known to you. And are the cause of all problems. <laughs> the fourth one is the solution. It is the, your reality. But we don't know it. Or we are not aware of it. That is what the Upanishad aims to teach us. And this teaching. So this is the Upanishad so far up to the sixth mantra. Third mantra. Fourth. Third mantra talks about the waker. And the waking world. The second. The fourth mantra talks about dreamer and the dream world. And the fifth and sixth mantras talk about the deep sleep. Now you see where the Upanishad's emphasis is. We ignore the deep sleep as unimportant. The Upanishad gives two whole mantras to the deep sleep. But now we are in the seventh mantra, which is what I want to talk about today, before we open it up for question answers. The real teaching of the Upanishad. Please, uh, if you have got books, open to the seventh mantra of the first chapter. Chapter 1. We have done three chapters. Chapter 1, the Upanishad itself. Remember the structure of the text. Upanishad is Mandukya Upanishad. It is embedded in a larger text called Mandukya Karika. The Mandukya Karika has four chapters. In the first chapter, Agama Prakarana, the Upanishad is set in that. Like a jewel in, a, in an ornament, like a diamond in that, it is set in that. So the seventh mantra of the Upanishad, turn to that. And let us chant together. I will chant and you, you repeat after me. Seventh mantra. Hmm. Can you find it? Yes. Only one or two said yes. 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 <laughs> if there is one thing that you should know from this entire Upanishad, it is the seventh mantra. Chapter 1, 7th Mantra. Nanta Pragyam, na Bahish Pragyam. Ah, so I will chant, please repeat after me. Nanta Pragyam, na Bahish Pragyam. Na Ubhayata Pragyam. Na Pragyana Ghanam. Na Pragyam. Na Pragyam. Adrishtam. Abhyavaharyam. Agrahyam, Alakshanam, Achintyam, Abhyapadeshyam, Ekatma Pratyasaram, Prapanchopashamam, Shantam, Shivam, Advaitam, Chaturtham Manyante, Saatma, what does this mean? mean? S 
at the last you see sa atma that is the self oh what what self you it's <laughs> that's you what am i what you thought you were what did i think i was waker dreamer sleeper that's what you think are we agreed that's what we normally think our lives to be whatever i am in the waking state dream state or deep sleep state um you are not those the real you the upanishad wants to say the real you is na na antapragyam the awareness turned inwards dreamer you are not the uh, dreamer na bahish pragyam the awareness turned outwards through sense organs not the waker na ubhayata pragyam in between some kind of awareness you see you talked about uh, drug state or uh, uh, say a pathological state or um, um, maybe coma or something like that no not even that not even that na pragyana ghanam the not, not the deep sleep you are not the deep sleeper either what you thought yourself to be none of them um na pragyam are we talking about uh, the awareness of god there is some god who realize who knows everything at once an omniscient something like that are we talking about not even that an all knowing knower no no no, no. we haven't we aren't even talking about that are we talking about something like a rock or a, you know a chair or a table we does not know anything at all not a knower at all no we are not talking about that either so what has been done now what he did now in the first part of the th- seventh mantra all that we considered ourselves to be he said that's not who you are really nanta pragyam na bahish pragyam na bhayata pragyam na pragyam na bhayata pragyam na pragyana ghanam na pragyam na pragyam that's the first part it is called in technically it is called pramata nisheda or abhimanitraya nisheda abhimanitraya means the small self the way it considers itself to be it it's a it's a, a denial of that and then it goes on the next part of it the second part of the mantra it denies that you are any of this what you experience in these three states your waking world even that's not the real self your dream world even that's not the real self your deep sleep darkness even that's not the real self so what does it say avyavaharyam first it says adrishyam ha huh? what what's the first line adrishyam. adrishyam it's not something that you can experience with your senses adrishtam adrishtam yeah. ah. so adrishtam. adrishtam so it's not something that you can experience with your senses the real self what you really are what we are talking about it's not that something that you can see it's not something that you hear or smell or taste or touch and then it says um avyavaharyam it's not something in transaction which you the the walk the person who's walking talking having a holding a job uh, being nice or being rude that's not the real self at all that's not who you are at all avyavaharyam in transaction the transactional self the relative self no agrahyam not an object of the motor organs it's not something you can catch it's not something you can walk to can i walk on pilgrimage to my real self i'm going to um, jerusalem or mecca or banaras or uh, vrindavan and i'll find my real self the thurium no it's not something you you can get by doing things with your motor organs by hands or uh, by walking there or whatever alakshanam. alakshanam it is not something that you can infer so inference is inference is the tool of knowledge in in science get some data and then make a hypothesis and test it and then you get scientific knowledge so is it at scientifically testable one or two uh, chairs are available i think yes Do, raise your hand there's a, there's one chair here and one more one right here yes yes please sit there's one there there's one here also thank you so much and if anybody can sit A young person can sit on there. <laughs> oh, there's one here. Come, 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 come. Very good. <laughs> so, um, achintyam. 
uh, alakshana means it's something that cannot be inferred there's a very technical reason for this L um, lakshana may here is the sign by which, we, by which you make an inference so parvato vanniman dhumat there is smoke on the fire uh, on the mountain there, therefore there must be fire so call the fire department no mountain but maybe smoke on the skyscraper you know smoke pouring out of the windows so call the fire department because you inferred fire by looking at the smoke that's a lakshana that's a sign but there is no sign by which you can infer the fourth you can't use scientific uh, inference for detecting that um, achintyam two words take them together avyapadeshyam and achintyam two, te two terms avyapadeshyam beyond language achintyam beyond conception no words can indicate the fourth we're just calling it the fourth in with respect to first second and third just calling it the fourth the real self but really no words can indicate it and why no words can indicate it i've given a whole talk on this uh, if you look up advaita vedanta and the paradox of language uh, why why do we keep saying that the ultimate reality is beyond language why not why can't we express it with language and when we're using language atman brahman the ultimate reality um, the absolute when we're using such words what are we doing so language cannot be used why language cannot be used i have a full discussion on that i'm not going into it but the upanishad wants to say it's beyond language and beyond conception beyond language why the discussion will show you in my talk i have shown what language can do how does language work and then it will show then i've shown how why language fails in the case of brahman because language cannot work for brahman anyway that's a different topic but the only thing you need to know is avyapadeshya means beyond naming beyond language beyond words achintyam beyond thought i have thought about it swami i've got the idea it's an idea yes then you haven't got it <laughs> if you think you have understood it you haven't if you think you have you haven't understood it you haven't <laughs> hmm the the kena upanishad it says that yeah. avijnatam vijanatam vijnatam avijanatam it says those who say i know it they don't know it but it goes on to say those who say i do not know it they know it <laughs> but uh, in uh, what what is he talking about he is talking about in the upanishad people who have already studied vedanta it's not the person who says i i don't know anything about it this vedanta so is he an enlightened person out there who doesn't come to the vedanta class no of course not we are talking about the enlightened person right here with two groups one group says that i have heard about it i have read the books i know it now no you don't and i have heard about it i have read the books understood it everything is clear and i don't know it ah you know it then <laughs> because what is being pointed out here they are not trying to be deliberately obtuse or deliberately paradoxical they're trying to point out something that which you can understand or you cannot understand both are appearing to one consciousness understanding and the failure of understanding both are lit up by one consciousness when you're working on a math problem that consciousness to which it was i'm the mind is churning away trying to get it and the next moment the intellect flashes with the knowledge ah i have cracked the problem now i know it both of them are appearing to one light that light is not an object of the intellect so the for that light for that consciousness the intellect can neither say i uh, understand it or i do not understand it in that sense it is beyond understanding but not that it's unknown swami vivekananda gives a talk in london saying that that you must not go away thinking that it is unknown and unknowable it is more than knowable it is in and through that everything is known right so the ancient sanskrit teachers given another example light is that which removes darkness so light is that which illumines illumination is definition the technical definition removing darkness something which was in darkness is now revealed by light that's called illumination now can let ask me let me ask you a question can in that sense can light be illuminated no because light was never in darkness 
in the same sense consciousness is not something that can be known as an object uh, it doesn't need to be something which is in darkness it needs to be illuminated and you need light for that but light for knowing light you don't need another light because it's never in darkness you don't need to remove darkness for light similarly consciousness which the fourth they're going to talk about is not an object which needs knowing anyway unknowable uh, or unthinkable achintyam avyapadeshyam language cannot be used then up to up to that much is the second part of the mantra what does it deny it denies this part the universe the first part of the mantra which said i'm not the waker not the dreamer not the deep sleeper it denied this part the real self is not what you think yourself to be waker dreamer deep sleeper the second part of the mantra the mantra has three parts the second part of the mantra denied the objective part of the, of your experience this world what we are talking about what upanishad wants to point out is not this world is not your dream is not your deep sleep is neither the causal nor the subtle nor the gross is not the deep sleep nor dream nor waking now the third part of the mantra starts ekatma pratyasaram prapanchopashamam shantam shivam advaitam that that third part this is the positive part which now indicates what are we talking about them then what are you talking about if it's neither the subject nor the object hmm, neither the subtle nor not the gross nor the causal then what are you talking about this is all that we experience it's like the question i show you three three ornaments a bracelet a necklace and a, a, a tiara and then i tell you what i'm telling you about is not the bracelet is not the necklace is not the tiara hey you just knocked out everything that i know no there is something else <laughs> what there are only three no there are three but there is a fourth fourth within quotes that's why it says chaturtham manyante there is a fourth within quotes manyante means people think that there is a fourth who think commentator says agyaha the ignorant people think it's a fourth but actually gold is not a fourth gold is is the one ah of which necklace tiara and bracelet are appearances so there is a fourth how do you know that positive not so far it's neti neti not this not this now tell me positively how do you know that ekatma pratyasaram by tracing the i consciousness atma pratyam means the i awareness this i i i is continuously happening there is that can you sit like that or all right all right let, let, let come 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 oh, yeah. This seat here. There's one seat there. There's one seat here. Yeah. No, no, come here. There's a seat here. Please, please come. Please come. You have to come and sit here. You get the best seat in the room <laughs> because you are the last one to come in. There's one seat there. Uh huh. I'm trying to get somebody to sit on the carpet. So until you allow somebody to sit on the carpet, people will keep coming in. <laughs> okay. The um ekatma pratyasaram. This continuous the continuous experience of I. I I am the one sitting and listening and talking I understand I do not understand I want liberation I suffer this I if you trace it back pratyasaram commentator says anusaram if you trace it back to its source that is one indication of the fourth we are trying to find out what this I refers to see what is being said here is this whole of vedanta is here whole of ramana maharshi is who am i is based on this this exact one phrase usually the i the the vertical i this i it refers to this waker 
or in the dream state, dream state it refers to the dreamer or when you wake up from deep sleep it refers to the deep sleeper. This is the usual, this is our understanding of the I and what Vedanta is trying to do is forcing you to shift the reference of the I to the real self. So that you can say honestly, knowing fully well what you mean, you will be able to say Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Chidananda Rupa Shivoham, I am Shiva of the nature of consciousness and bliss. Honestly, not just poetically, not just nicely singing or chanting, but you honestly you can claim that. And that is the whole purpose of Vedanta. Ekatma Pratyasaram. Next word, Prapancho Pashamam. In that fourth one, very beautiful term, the silence of the universe. What is the universe? Gross universe, subtle universe, causal universe. Waker, waker's world, dreamer's world, deep sleep darkness. None of them are there. They are no longer real there. Gold is the silence of the ornaments. Silence, the cessation of the universe. Prapancha upashama, the quiescence of the universe. And on this one word, Gaudapada writes one whole chapter. Don't look so puzzled, you have already read the whole chapter. That's the second chapter. Vaitatya Prakarana, Prapanchopashama, the silence of the universe. A more technical term for that, more common term is Mithyatva, Jagat Mithyatva, the falsity of the universe. Prapanchopashamam, Shantam. Shantam means, since it's the silence of the universe, Shantam means peace itself, free of all sorrow and suffering. The fourth is free of all sorrow and suffering. Where is sorrow and suffering? Waker's word. In dream also. In deep sleep itself, you don't have any problem. Though the seed of problem is there because you come back. But in the self, in the fourth, there is no problem. Shantam. And Shivam. It's not a blankness like deep sleep. Shivam. It is auspiciousness. It is Purnatvam, completion. It is joy itself. It is the ultimate fulfillment. After which you don't need anything more ever. Shivam. Shantam, Shivam and non-dual. Non-dual, Advaitam. I will not go into this subject. We have just completed the third chapter. The chapter on non-duality. Advaitam. And this one, where is it? It's considered to be the fourth. Fourth, why? You just said not two, non-dual. Now you are saying four. Is it one or two or three or four? You are saying not two. Then how, if there is no two, how can it be four? <laughs> because the first three are appearances. If I say necklace, bracelet, tiara, how many did I say? Three. three. And if I say gold, necklace, bracelet, tiara, gold, how many? Three. Four. Somebody saying four? <laughs> it's one. Because the first three are appearances of the fourth one. There's only one. If you count gold, if you see the, the ocean, waves in the ocean, 10,000 waves. But if you count the water then, will you say 10,000 plus one? No, it's one only. That one alone is appearing as the 10,000. So, the self alone appears as waker and waker's world. That fourth, the self alone appears as dreamer and dream world. The deep sleeper and the deep sleep darkness as the waking, dreaming, deep sleep, as the gross, subtle and causal. But the reality of all of that, the reality of this entire samsara is that one. It is the essence of this samsara. And that is you, tattva masi, that thou art. Realize it, sa atma, that is the self. And say, good for the self, but what about me? <laughs> the self is you, that's you. So, what? What do you do now? Savigyaya, it has to be realized, not just known, the word used is vigyaya, not just attended a class, not just took notes, not just memorized the verses, vigyaya, where you honestly, to yourself, you must be able to own up to it, admit it, yes, that is true, and you would say, oh, a load of my back, what is the load, the entire universe is a load of my back. I am free of it, finally, always was. Honestly to yourself, you can say. Honestly to yourself, you can go beyond complaint, beyond grumbling. 
So that is liberation. You're set free. Not for a moment, but forever. So that is the whole message of the Mandukya Upanishad. And details we have been studying. The essential teaching has been given. Nothing more than this is there in Vedanta. This is the highest teaching. I am telling you right now. Guaranteed, in human civilization, in life, you will not come across anything higher. You may think once in a while, oh, I've got something better now. This technique, that meditation, this philosophy. At the end of our life, when you look, take a minute to look back upon all the things that you have seen and heard, nothing further than this. This is the ground of all teaching, of all purpose of life, the point of it. All right. Um, hold on. I'm going to now, I've said what I wanted to say and we have time now. Now what I'm going to do is, I have some notes which I had made when I was studying this from different masters whom, with whom I've studied. So once in a while I will read out, um, once in a while I will read out one of these points and just for your cons consideration as a conversation starter. You might say, isn't that enough of a conversation starter? <laughs> this is actually Vedanta, conversation ender. <laughs> so let me... These are notes uh, which on this one mantra alone. In fact, the teacher from which I got these notes mostly, one teacher, Akandananda Saraswati, he used to live in Vrindavan many years ago. I never met him, it was before my time. But his books are mostly in Hindi. You met him? My guru. He's your guru. Akandananda Saraswati of Vrindavan Valley. Oh, wonderful. He has got two major works. One is Mandukya Karika, four volumes. The same Akhanda answer, Swati. Very good. And another one is the Bhagavat, two volumes, yes. Tremendous, uh, as a scholar of Vedanta, unmatched in the recent times in, in, in India. And a great sadhu also. Well, you are blessed to have such a guru. In his Mandukya Karika, um, seventh mantra, which we just, just discussed, he has a chapter on that. When I was reading his explanation, I was amazed. I found so many nuances he has brought out. It's the same thing, what we just said now. But so many nuances. They used to say about him, Vedanta Siddhanta Nachatet. He would make the teachings of Vedanta dance as it were. So, I started counting. How many things has he said about this one mantra? And I counted, I think, 125 points. I'm not going to discuss 125. It will take a dozen classes or more. I noted down some 25 points which I liked. Some of them I'll bring before you. Nuances. Puzzles, problems, uh, matter for investigation, for insight. I am sure many of you will come up with the answers very soon. Keep the, to understand it simply, keep the, the ornament and gold example in mind. So here is something, let me read it out to you. A question. When the Atman has been described to have four fathers, okay, let me put it this way. In the earlier mantras, you wanted to describe the first three aspects of the Atman. And you straight away described them. Here is the waker and the waker's world. The next you said, here is the dreamer and the dreamer world. Here is the sleeper and the deep sleep darkness. Now you have to describe the fourth, the real self. Describe it. Why have why you started, suddenly you started saying, it's not the waker, not the dreamer, not the sleeper. Why, do you, why are you doing that? Tell me what it is directly. This is actually directly from Shankaracharya's commentary. Shankaracharya starts his commentary. Just a minute. Till now you are doing fine. You wanted to point out the four aspects of the self. You pointed out the waker. I get it. Yeah, I am the waker. You pointed out the dreamer. I understand. In my dreams, that's the dreamer. You pointed out the deep sleeper. I understand. Now point out the fourth, the Turiya. But what are you doing? You start by saying it's not the waker, not the dreamer, not the deep sleeper, not something in between. Why? Because it's not the object. It's the subject. subject, but I am. This is also the subject. The waker is also a subject. You cannot, you, cannot you cannot directly. Okay, this one point. You cannot directly point out. And deeper meaning. Observer. This is also an observer. You are the waker. You are the observer now. You cannot directly point to it. That's why you're negating what has been pointed out. You know what the real answer is? Because? Because, let me give you an example. 
there is a snake. It looks like a snake, but actually it's a rope. Now you want to point out the rope. What will you say? You will say, it's not a snake. It's a rope. It's not a snake. What you are seeing as a snake is not, is not a snake. It's a rope. Somebody asks, somebody asks so, hey, wait a minute. Why are you picking a fight with the poor snake? You want to point, point out a rope. Show me a rope. Why are you saying it's not a snake, it's a rope? Because you are looking at the rope. Very important. You are looking at the rope. You are making a mistake. You are seeing it as a snake. Therefore, this error has to be corrected. One. Second. Where is the rope? There itself. Where is the gold? You want to point out? Remember the gold and ornament example? Now you want to point out the gold. How will you do it? If you want to point out the necklace, you can show. Here is a necklace. You want to point out the bracelet? See my bracelet. You want to point out the tiara? See my tiara. Want to point out the gold? Ah, you'll have to say, this is not really a necklace. It's really, the thing there is gold. It's not really a bracelet. It's the same thing, it's gold. It's not really a tiara. It's the same thing, it's gold. You have to deny the name and form to point out the reality which is already there. Very important point. Uh, so this is one discussion point. What else? Do you see the beauty of this discussion? Yeah. These are the nuances to be pointed out. Come, you sit here. You get to sit here. Yes. Don't play the harmonium. So what was Akhandranji's answer? It is only by denying, I am given English, it is only by denying the imagined snake that one gets access to the substratum, the rope. You can't point out a separate rope. Similarly, an intuitive grasp of the fourth, intuitive grasp of the fourth requires you first to realize the falsity of the three. The fourth is the substratum of the three avasthas. The fourth consciousness is the substratum of waking, dreaming, deep sleep. So one point. Another thing, big misconception. You don't have it, but some people have it. Very important, after studying all this, one misconception comes. What is the misconception? The misconception is, where do you find the waker? In the waking state. Waking world, waker, you are the waker. In the waking state, where will you find the dreamer? In the dream state. Where will you find the deep sleeper? In the deep sleep state. Now the question will be, where will you find the Turiya? The immediately answer will be in the Turiya state. No. <laughs> It's like, remember the again, gold and the ornament example. Where will you find the necklace? When it's a necklace. Where will you find the bracelet? As a bracelet. When you find the um, ring of the tiara? As the tiara. Yeah. Where will you find the gold? And say in the gold state. No, <laughs> they're all gold state. Uh, where is the thurium? In all states. Uh, very important point. Otherwise, what happens? Shankaracharya comments, Anya dwaram nasti. Uh, there is no other door to the realization of the Turiya, of your real nature, unless you investigate your experience, waking, dreaming, deep sleep. This is the door to reality. There is no door to finding out the gold, except investigating the necklace and the bracelet. And the If you throw away the necklace, bracelet and tiara, will you find gold? No. 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 If you take the necklace itself as gold, no. You have to investigate what is it that continues when the necklace is gone and the tiara has come. What continues? And what does not continue? The name does not continue. Necklace is a name, tiara is another name. Form does not continue. Use does not continue. Material continues. What continues in the waking, dreaming, deep sleep? Turiya. Same question is posed in another way. I am talking from there. Same question is posed in another way. Just a minute. Waker is different from dreamer. Dreamer is different from sleeper, deep sleeper. Different means? Different if, if a, 
waker could be hap happily lying down on the bed and gone to sleep, but the dreamer may be scared and anxious and uh, running to catch a train or something like that. They are different. They are different circumstances. They are different from each other. They are all different from each other. Then how can you say that there is one common thing among all of them? You see, if they are all different from each other, how can one thing be same as all three? Uh, you understand what I am asking? If the three things, there are three different things, how can you say there is one thing which is same as three of them? Because th three are not same, they are different. It is, like, uh, it is like saying, necklace is different from tiara. Tiara is different from the bracelet. How can gold be the same as necklace, tiara, bracelet? They are three different things. No, there is an underlying reality which is, a, they, it is possible because the three are appearances of one thing. Again and again this has to be hammered. The ultimate reality, Brahman, your real nature is available here, now, as you, the real you. Okay, let's start the discussion. Please tell me. Now, I read something nice about this. It said a room that has been in darkness for 1,000 years. Yes. It does not take 1,000 years. It only takes one instant to be illuminated. Very beautiful. It's Sri Ramakrishna saying, uh, a room in, yeah, a room in, three, uh, it's in the gospel of Ramakrishna. If a thousand years of darkness in a room, it will not take a l years and years. You can't say that, uh, oh, it will take a long time. We don't know how long the room has been shut up. We have to focus a lot of light on it and put months and months of illumining it to get some light back into the room. No. Light a matchstick, a thousand years of darkness flees away in an instant. This breakthrough, you might, it might take a long time, long effort to make the breakthrough. But when the breakthrough comes, it's instantaneous. I had one, it's instantaneous and it's the same thing and it's continuous. It will never go away again. <coughs> Just as your sense of the self, you, it does not go away. It does not take, how much effort does it take? To maintain your body in shape takes effort. To maintain your mind keen, it takes effort. To maintain you as I, I, how much effort does it take? Nothing. Can you change it? No. Can you increase it? No. It is one and constant. That breakthrough, once you get it, is one and constant. Knowledge, intellectual knowledge comes and goes. Understanding may deepen. But that thing becomes, this is constant. Um, I had a teach. I have a teacher. Uh, he was um, in India. Very old teacher. <laughs> this time I went to St. Louis, Swami. Chetanaranji, who is very senior to me, very, very senior Swami, one of the senior monk, most monks of our order in the United States. He also studied under the same teacher. So the same teacher taught Swami Chetanaranji, taught me, me too. And the teacher is still alive. He is 105 years old or 106 years old now. And he, he claims he's still young because his mother lived to 110 and his father to 108. So he says, I still got time. <laughs> anyway, he um, told me, personally once he told me, when he was a novice, I think in the 1940s or 1930s or something like that, um, he asked, uh, he used to go to a great pundit, scholar of Vedanta, Yogendranath Tarka Vedanta Titha in, in Calcutta University. And this novice, his name was Medha Chaitanya, he used to go and study under him. So once, uh, and, and um, he would come back, there was an old Swami, an old monk, he was a Naishtik Brahmachari. He was a disciple of Swami Vivekananda. And he was blind. He used to live in the main monastery. So when this novice would come back from the teaching, he would cross the Ganga, go for the teaching and come back by studying under the scholar. Then this old blind monk would ask, would, have, would say that, what did you learn today? So you have to repeat. What, what did the pand Pandit teach you today? In Bengali he would say, Pandit ki wale. What did the Pandit, the scholar teach you today? And this novice, who later became my master, he would have to repeat the day's teachings. So one day what happened was, this Veda Chaitanya, my master, he went to um, that scholar and he found this old pundit lying down and reading a book, a new book. And he asked, um, Master, do you still have to study? You know, you're all life, you're the greatest scholar uh, in our generation. And the old pundit said to him, you know something, if I don't learn something new every day, I don't want to live. If I don't want to learn something new every day, I don't want to live. And my master told me that, uh, that the teacher, he said, I was so impressed by this. 
I came back across the Ganga and the old blind monk Swami Vivekananda's disciple was waiting there and he said, Pandit Kivale, what did the Pandit say? Oh, you know the Pandit taught me today, he said, uh, he said that, he said that if I don't learn something new every day, I don't want to live. And then this old Swami, uh, old monk, Gyan Maharaj, he said, hmm, that is good for the Pandit, but for the enlightened person, that knowledge is not new every day. It comes once and forever. So, this is the difference. The Pandit's idea is good. You should always have, you should be like that Pandit because that keeps the intellect keen. You are, um, your mind is living. If you don't learn, you're not living. As long as you live, so long you should keep learning. But that's one kind of knowledge. We are not talking about that here. We are talking about the realization of the true self, the fourth. And once that flash comes, thousand years of darkness, gone in a flash, and it's permanent. Never goes away. Sir, what is the role of ego? Uh, I, yes. as the self, yes. identify myself with this ego. Yes. Yes. Everything is done by the ego. Yes. How do I get freedom from these clutches? Right. What is the ego? It is the I sense. Right now when I look inside and say, in my mind I find a certain function which says I, I, I. Uh, it's, it's a function of the mind. Ahankar. In Vedanta it's called Ahankara. What is this function? It integrates all other functions. The memory is another component. Think of it as an app. The memory is a component which dredges up old traces and brings it forward. The intellect is something which gives you comprehension. The mind, manas, is something that weighs alternatives. I'm just translating it with Sanskrit definitions. Sankalpa vikalpa atmaka mana nishchayatmika buddhi abhimanatmika antakkarana vritti ahankara ahankara is that function of the mind which appropriates to itself all other functions. Walking is going on. Ego is not walking. The body is walking with the help of the legs and ego says, I am walking. <laughs> the tummy says, hungry, give me food, give me food. The ego says, I am hungry, give me food. Ego is not hungry. But that's the function of the ego. And it's not bad. It, it's, uh, it gives a unity to this little being. But it's not you. It is not you. The whole problem is when I, the consciousness, having forgotten myself, I identify myself with the ego and the ego identifies itself with the waker and the waker's world and things going on there, I become this little self. What Vedanta tells you is, you are not the function of the mind called the ego. You are the consciousness in which the function of the mind called the ego is bubbling up. In Hindi, purpurati hai. It bubbles up and does its work. But you are not it. The way to be free of it is to know yourself as I am the witness of the ego. Is it not possible that witness also becomes a function of the mind? Right. It's possible. Witness as a function of the mind is what is called introspection. The mind has a capability to look into itself. That's the mind trying to witness its thoughts. It's like a meditation exercise. Be the witness to your thoughts. Good exercise. But it's not the witness meant by this one. It's the mind trying to be a witness. In Akhandan Saraswati, in his Drigdrishya Viveka, he says, Lagta hai na sakshi ho gaya. Are you, Don't you feel that you are the witness? And uh, everybody says, yes. You're going to fall into a big, big hole. You've dug a specially big pit for yourself. What is that? It's a state created by the mind, by deep meditation. It's done in Buddhist meditation, in some kinds of Vedantic meditation. It's a good exercise. But remember, it's generated by the mind. The moment the mind stops doing that, you stop being that witness. That witness is not the real witness. The real witness is choicelessly, Helplessly, it is the witness forever. It's not trying to be a witness. It is that which lights up the mind. 
शंकराचार्य से मनो बुद्ध अहंकार चित्तानि ना अहम अहम ना अहंकार आई एम नॉट द ईगो आई एम नॉट आई वॉट ए कॉन्ट्राडिक्टरी एपरेंटली कॉन्ट्राडिक्टरी स्टेटमेंट हाउ कैन आई बी नॉट आई बट आई द रियल आई इज नॉट दैट स्मॉल आई द ईगो प्रूफ आर यू अवेयर ऑफ द ईगो इन द ईगो ईगो वर्कस आई अंडरस्टैंड आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड I have come here to listen to Vedanta. Are you aware of this? Who is the one aware of it? Ah, but don't make that an object. Be that. What you said is effortlessly. So it is. It has to happen. No. The breakthrough is effort. Uh, has to be done through effort. Mm-hmm. But that ego, that that witness of the ego, the Atman, the, that one is effortless. It shines effortlessly. The breakthrough. for that you have to put effort you have to come to vedanta class you have to listen carefully try to understand question you have to meditate shravana manana nididhyasana purity of purity of mind has to be attained through effort uh, yoga bhakti um, uh, ethical life all these require effort but this is just preparing the instrument once the breakthrough is made that illumination which comes that's effortless because it's it's you it's it's already there forever uh, yes i'll come to you. It is like a little bit like applying homeopathy. Homeopathy, yeah. Huh. So if you take a low potency remedy, you take it every day in small doses, but you don't feel like the wow effect. Hmm. You don't. It's very subtle. Hmm. So I apply Vedanta every day when I go to the supermarket, when I go for a walk in the park, on the way to the gym, hmm. uh, when I work in front of the computer. I try to apply Vedanta throughout the day and dwell on it. Hmm. Then this morning I woke up on the terrible night I didn't sleep well I woke up sad depressed and just like a wreck and then I thought oh god and today is the last vedanta class mm. <laughs> the monk is leaving and and I just got overwhelmed by <laughs> sadness and depression seriously and then I dug myself deeper and deeper into the hole and then I thought wait a minute who mm. is depressed mm. and who is witnessing the depression hmm. the sadness and the tiredness and who is witnessing the absence of the tiredness and the depression who is depressed and tired my body and my mind <coughs> but i am not my body and my mind and all of a sudden for the first time ever i got this distance hmm. between the mind body and this witness hmm. and suddenly everything lifted and hmm. i managed to hold on to it from like 5 to 7 uh, to 6:30 <laughs> hmm. but it so it's like with homeopathy in an acute situation then suddenly when you apply it you feel the impact there are other do others many others identify with what she's saying you understand what she's trying to say yeah. yes so right day to day and now you don't notice the shift Uh-huh. when something big comes like this morning and i got so sad because i was tired and then i thought of you know this is the last vedanta class when i applied it then in this acute desperation all right then <coughs> good this is what i want mean by having a conversation so here is an honest report and here is something that we can work with by the way just as a A bulletin it's not the last vedanta class it's just the last meeting of the vedanta uh, study group the wednesday class for the time being for this season but we have the tuesday class and the friday class and the sunday talks and so on and so forth and that will go on um yes the thing to notice there's several things which you said one is it was there from 5:30 to 6 to 6:30 good improvement <laughs> but it's just that feeling of connection and being in it in the flow which was there from 5:30 to 6:30 and again it seemed to go away but I what was sleep and then when i woke up it was gone it was gone right <laughs> that feeling of clarity then came the feeling of fa- falling asleep then the feeling of awakening and experiencing oh that clarity is gone all of that is happening to you Did you not experience it? Did you not experience it? <coughs> that one which you which experienced this, the coming of clarity and going, 
the coming of sleep and the awakening that one is the atman it doesn't go away wait that is the important thing this feeling of clarity pleasant though it may be it's just an antidote to suffering when there's suffering in the mind awaken that sense of clarity it will sweep away the suffering immediately in a trice but neither that clarity nor that suffering are you you are the one to which both of these are dancing that is one point i wanted to make the second point i want to make is important it applies to not all but some of us here many of us through vedanta classes earlier and now we have got some insight we have already got some insight give importance to the insight which you have already got not importance to the troubles which the world throws at you what weightage am i giving i have learned this i got it i forgot it now huge problems i'm fighting with the problems no i got something precious focus there these problems will keep coming throughout lifetime not important it's not the world trying to distract you it's your mind monkey mind don't pay attention to monkey mind pay attention to what the monk said ha <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> really this is something it will change your life in, uh, in in an instant the quality of my life depends on what i put my mind to and how much of my mind i give there w- what am i thinking about and how much of my attention am i giving there am i giving attention to this temporary tiredness that has come and all of my thinking is about that then suffering am i giving attention to the understanding and clarity which i had had that this tiredness is also an arising in me the consciousness which is not tired they let me give attention to that in spite of the illness of the body this i learned from another great monk um yesterday yogatman ji was mentioning him ramanand saraswati he said something very interesting he was him i met a few times in in haridwar one of the few i considered to be maybe spiritually enlightened those who have met he would say something often प्राप्त ज्ञान का आदर करो गेव इम्पॉर्टेंस रिस्पेक्ट इम्पॉर्टेंस टू इट रिस्पेक्ट टू इट टू वॉट यू हैव ऑलरेडी गॉट वी हैव ऑलरेडी गॉट अ लॉट हाउ डू यू गिव रेस्पेक्ट पे अटेंशन टू इट वॉट आई माई गॉट कीप यूर माइंड देयर अनदर थिंग विच केम आउट फ्रॉम वॉट यू सेड दट प्रैक्टिसिंग वेदांत वाइल यूर वर्किंग शॉपिंग कंप्यूटर गुड this is one way to practice vedanta important way especially when you run up against problems in life summon that power it's like a super power it's like a super power you summon it getting the habit ah get into the habit instead of being miserable oh i was miserable i suffer 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 mind makes you want to do that good candidate for making us a, a sufferer yes please suffer yes i'm ready to suffer sir <laughs> No I will not suffer the moment you uh, nasty mind you're going to make me suffer I will bring up uh, the the vedanta and give you what the lesson you deserve bring vedanta into play make it work for you but i find it easier when you apply it every day so it becomes a good habit. that's good so certainly certainly very good you're not frozen right okay? you're like ah oh. a few times when you start applying it this insight which you have already got not the great breakthrough which we of the swami talked about which will happen to me in the nth lifetime not for that the one which you have already got remember that great breakthrough which will happen is just a deeper realization of what we have already got now wait so yes hold on there's an important thing i want to share how enlightened people deal with the troubles of the world remember an enlightened person also um has, is enlightened in a body we call jivan mukta so there is old age and disease and problems and there are people who behave nicely with that person people who behave nastily with that person so worldly problems in some sense as long as you are in the world you will face that what is the value of enlightenment the value is here how does that enlightened person use that that realization like you said this is a story 
you know, stories within stories. There was a, one of our monks, Swami Dhiresh Anandaji. I never met him, but he was a staunch non-dualist who lived uh, at the foothills of the Himalayas. Many of our senior Swamis, including Swami Chet Chetanandji, whom I met in St. Louis. Uh, so, he had a long association with Dhireshanji until the passing away of, of that Swami, Dhireshanji, the great non-dualist. And what this Swami, Dhireshanji, what he did was, in all his decades in the Himalayas, he would go to the good masters, the enlightened masters, and collect from them the teachings, the special insights, which he wrote down in a diary. And because he understood Chetananji Maharaj is the person who can collect this and preserve it and publish it, he gave that diary to Swami Chetananji. So Chetananji has published parts of it in Bengali. I'm sure it will come in English very soon. So one thing which reminds me what you said. The Swami Dhireshananji used to visit a monk called Shankarananda, not the Shankarananda of our order, a monk called Bhikshu Shankarananda, who was regarded as a Jivan Mukta who lived in Haridwar in the 19, I think maybe 40s or 50s. A very unique kind of <laughs> monk, uh, what you might call a crazy non-dualist, who lived on a little cot. And there are so many stories about him. Our monk, Swami Dhirishanda, once asked him, Swami, you are a great non-dualist, you know, a jnani, a man of knowledge. But I, where is your library? A jnani is supposed to have lots of <laughs> books. Where are your Vedanta books? There is nothing there, he's just sitting there. He would just wear a loincloth and lie down. And they seemed to be the laziest person in the world. He would just be relaxing all the time. <laughs> but he was one of the wisest enlightened masters of that time. So this monk, Bhikshu Sankaranda said, Oh, I have books. I have three books. And I read them every day. And every day there is enlightenment. Oh, what are those three books? Well, Amazon Prime, I ordered them. <laughs> the three books, Waking, Dreaming and Deep Sleep. <laughs> uh, Jagrat, Swapna, Sushupti. I read it every day. We all have those three books and we read it every day. We don't get it. He gets it. What does it mean? That these three books are telling us that knowledge every day of our lives. Anyhow, he told another story to Swami Dhirishanji who wrote it in the notebook. And today itself was reading. But I have read this story earlier also. It's a little myth or I don't know how true it is. You know mongoose fights against the cobra? Yes. I have actually seen that happen. Some of you may have seen it happen. So, mongoose, they like fighting against them. The cobras are very venomous. Now, the story is, I don't know, biologists can say how true it is, but the story is this. The cobra may sometimes, sometimes, nick the mongoose or just bite it and put a little of that venom into the mongoose. Now, that burning sensation, the mongoose rushes into the forest and it chews on a particular herb available at the foothills of the Himalayas which counteracts the poison. And that's dispelled. And the mongoose comes back and can fight against the snake again. Now this is, maybe it's not true, but anyway, this is a good example. What the enlightened person does is, you already you have that knowledge available to you. When samsara troubles you, when maya troubles you, sickness, unhappiness, depression, nasty behavior from others, hopelessness of life, whatever is coming, go and chew that little herb of self-knowledge. I am the fourth. The first three, are, they come and shine and disappear. They are all nothing apart from me. You know, they are like a dream. The, the great things which happened in the dream, the most miserable things which happened in your nightmares, when you wake up, the best of dreams and the worst of dreams, the f person who was very nice to you in the dream, the person who was absolutely nasty to you in a dream, when you wake up, the two are same to you. Exactly like that, so is the waking in this one consciousness. This is the herb which the mongoose of, the enlightened mongoose will chew. Do that. This is the way you should deal with problems in life. Don't monopolize, let others. Oh, you want to say something? One more question okay. about that. But you said once that the witness is still duality. And the witness? To push the witness aside. Ah, that's another good question. Full of good questions. But this is the last one you're, uh, you're allowed. <laughs> I remember when I was a student, I was full of questions, more to show off my knowledge than to uh, <laughs> really ask. But that's sort of teacher's pet, you know. So whenever the teacher would say something, I would raise my hand. And 
Oh, to answer the question, the teachers would ask, I would have the answers to all the questions. The teacher would ask a question, so I would raise my hand. One day the teacher was walking, he asked a question and he raised the hand. Before I could, he grabbed my hand, you understand, he put it down. <laughs> and he said, yes, you answer, to give such answer to somebody else. Okay, now, um, the witness, there is duality there, follow this carefully. Even if you know, understand the witness, there is still duality when? When you consider this to be a reality apart from you. See, the witness can be of two types. The witness can be of two types. One is the Sankhyan witness who watches a separate reality, separated from me. I am the watcher, I am not part of the play. It's a Broadway show on stage, I am in the audience. It, the tragedies and the comedies of that show do not concern me. I am unconcerned, separate from it, I am enjoying it. I am a witness. And you are free. The problems of the play do not affect you. In fact, more the problems, the more you enjoy it. <laughs> That's one kind of witness. But there is duality there. Because you are there and a separate play is going on, ap apart from you. That's one kind of witness. There is another kind of witness. In your dreams, when you saw a whole world of things happening, and you were there yourself, and you experienced all of that. When you wake up, you say, oh, I witnessed all of that. But all of what you witnessed was not apart from you. It was you alone who came as the seer and the seen. That is non-duality. That is Advaitic witness. What Advaita says is not that you are a consciousness apart. And apart from you, there is this whole thing going on. No. You are the consciousness in which the waker is seeing the waker's world. Waker and waker's world both are appearances in you. Again, I'm reminded of what something Swami Dhireshanda said. What is enlightenment? The realization that there is no existence apart from your own existence. Swa atirikta satta abhava. The Sanskrit term. Swa, self. Atirikta, apart from the self. Satta, existence. Abhava, absence. The absence of any existence apart from your existence is enlightenment. Yet in that existence you can go on dreaming. That's what happens in a dream. In the dream, is there any existence apart from you? No. That is enlightenment. Therefore, whatever happens in the dream, even if it's a nasty dream, you are still unconcerned. When you know it's a dream, of course. Similarly, Advaita is when you realize this entire drama is not a Broadway show. It's a dream in your own mind. Like, exa example, dream in you. So it's there, there is no duality. That self is a witness and what it witnesses is also within itself. It's not a separate existence. Separate existence, Sankhyan witness, Prakriti Purusha. Advaitic witness, one without a second. Ekam eva advaitiyam. So others had their hands up. Yes, I'll come to you. Yes. Uh, what he was learning every day. And you just said, like he said, that if I don't learn something new every day, it's not as much worth living. Yeah. And he said, no, it's wrong. No, it's not wrong. It's very good for a scholar. And it's very good for the intellect. Keep learning. Let the intellect keep learning. But enlightenment is not like that. I get a new enlightenment every day. No. And that's why that, but he did not refer to the samadhi state here. No. All right, very good and deep question. Oh, we're getting all fantastic questions today. <laughs> what role does Samadhi play? An important role, but not an indispensable role. In the path of knowledge, which we are doing here, throughout the Mandukya, generally, Gaudapada does not refer to Samadhi. Even when he comes close to Samadhi, no mind, Amani Bhava, he says it's a good aid. What is Samadhi? Samadhi is shutting down all awareness of an external world, shutting out the world. Shutting out the body and the mind and yet you are awake. Because we do shut it all of it out in deep sleep. But that's not a useful state. Samadhi, it's like deep sleep while you are awake. Sounds contradictory but it's entirely possible. And there are varieties of samadhis. So a devotee might try to get samadhi not in this sense but on meditating on his beloved Krishna or Rama or like Sri Ramakrishna on Kali and then actually get a vision of Kali. That's called Savikalpa Samadhi. And those, you're right, those realizations are many. And they can happen one after another. You can get newer and newer ones. But note something about those realizations. They come and go. 
Yeah. Sri Ramakrishna, even Sri Ramakrishna, who had it every day, but not continuously. If he had it continuously, he wouldn't have been able to interact with the rest of us. So he gets it. He goes into ecstasy. He's talking with the Divine Mother. But there are times of the day, rest of the day, when he's not talking with the Divine Mother. He's talking with you. So those are particular states of mind attainable through strenuous spiritual experience, uh, practice, uh, through japa, through meditation, or by the Guru's grace, or by pranayama, their tantric kriyas, or by awakening the kundalini. A variety of spiritual experiences are possible and they are good and valuable, in fact better than worldly experiences. Better than worldly experiences. But they are not what we are talking about here. So samadhi is not necessarily a prerequisite? No. no. But, f- but focus of mind definitely is a prerequisite, otherwise we won't be able to hold on to this. Yes. No, no, no. Right. But they, one, one thing must uh, remember, there may be a sense of going deeper. Why is there a sense of going deeper? There may be a sense of growing clarity. There may be a sense of growing stability. Why? Not because the Atman is growing deeper or clearer or more stable. It is always as clear as it always was. It's only that the mind is now remaining more and more with that. And you feel, I am more stable with, uh, I am my, it is staying from 5.30 to 6.30 you might feel now. That's the mind. It's not the Atman. You are always the self, you always were. Uh, so that thing, it's good to do that. But remember, it's not even necessary. If the mind is crying, oh, I'm having too much worldliness, good. Practice Samadhi, stay with the knowledge, stay with the clarity, then the mind will say, I'm okay. But a further stage of maturity is, it's not necessary. It's like looking at your face in the mirror. Ah, now I've got it. And the mirror goes away. No, 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 it's going away. 5.30 to 6.30, then gone. Oh my God, it's gone. But after some time you realize whether the mirror is there or the mirror is not there, what you are seeing is this. Whether you are seeing it, ah nice, not seeing it, where did it go? No, not where did it go, it's here. So basically uh-huh. you have to get realized it's 24-7 and you're watching yourself being in a wakeful state, being in a dream state. Being in a dream state. It's 24-7 in the sense that you realize it was always there. But it's not 24-7 in the sense that in your mind always it will be going on, I am Brahman, I am Brahman, I am Brahman. No, not like that. It's a sense of which I'll be functioning. Yes. It's like you know yourself what you are right now. Yes. You the waker, you have, a pers- you have a name, you have an identity, a story, yourself. Mm-hmm. You are not always thinking about it. No. It's effortlessly there. Though even this thing is artificial. Your parents gave you that name, your experiences gave you a life story. Even this is artificial. But even that artificial thing of the waker's identity is effortless. It's there. Once you make the breakthrough and go beyond that, the real self, Imagine how effortless it will be. There will be no question of trying to um, hold on to it. At first, then maybe trying to hold on to it. And sometimes if there is problem in life, if there is suffering in life, then you may go like the mongoos back to that. Okay. Otherwise, it's, it's plain, um, always available. A very good phrase is always available. Nitya prapta, always available. Anytime you want it, you get it instantly. But you will see very soon there is no need for it also. It's always shining forth. It's perfectly all right. Yeah, that will that comes later. Um, But remember, it's always there. It's even even now it's there. But Swamiji, it would be the khadda that we were talking about. Maybe we were in that. How do we know that it's not that? See, always a test is suffering. Am I able to overcome my suffering? At least say to myself honestly, it's fine. If it's not fine. I have read all the Vedanta and it is not working, then it is a Gadda. <laughs> yes. My question is about the seventh verse when he started to say what was it, the first is negation, then Ekatma Pratyasharam. Three parts. First negation, second negation, and then positive. First negation of Pramata, the knower. Second negation of Prameya, the known. And third is pointing to the reality beyond knower and known. I mean, my question is about the first word hmm. when it is pointed out. Hmm. And you told that uh, the whole of Raman 
about this teaching hmm. is based on that. Yes. So tracing, tracing back yeah. the, the question, who am I? Yes. I want a little bit more clarification and practical hints on this. All the techniques of Vedanta are meant for that. All the teachings of Ramana Maharshi are meant for that. Ek atma pratyasara. If you take the, up the atma pratyasara, atma pratyasara means the, the cognition of ego, I, the I sense. If you take it up, right now it is available. But what is available right now is not the real I. Immediately you will see it is mixed up with body and mind. If you say I, I am sitting here, I am this gentleman, I am thinking this, thinking this mind, sitting here body. If you inquire into it, you say give me some practical hits, hints on inquiry, very easy. Have you heard my, uh, the class on Drik Drishya Viveka? That is one way. Panchakosha Viveka, another way. You see, I am here and sitting and listening to you. Isn't it the waker? But what is Upanishad telling you? You are not the waker. You are the witness of the waker. This waker is different from the dreamer. The one who was say traveling in Delhi last night in dreams. That is a different one. Different person, different world. Here is one person who is sitting here and listening to Vedanta. And there is another example when it is completely blank. What is the one to whom all three appear? Because you have to admit there is only one to which all three have appeared. You are not three persons. Uh, you are not divided into three parts. You are one person. You are one reality. Which is experiencing three here. What is that one? This is a technique. This is Avasthatraya Viveka. Another is Panchakosha Viveka. I. Who am I? This one. But then this one is an object. Drishya. This, I, it's an object. Just like this. Do I say I am this pen? No. It's an object of my experience. Exactly like that body is an object of my experience. Go inward. What do I find? Prana. Life forces. Is that an object? Yes. Go inwards. What do I find? Mind. Ah, I must be the mind. But is the mind an object? Yes. Thoughts, feelings, emotions, ideas, desires, conceptions, memories. That's the mind. Including the eye sense, this ego, that's also in the mind. That's also an object. Beyond that, the understanding which I'm using to inquire. This is a tool I'm using to inquire. All this I'm trying to do, which, which I use for understanding mathematics, to do the taxes, to uh, inquire into Vedanta, ego, the um, Vigyana, Maya Kosha, intellect. But that's also an object. It understands, it fails to understand, it does one thing and another thing. The determinative faculty. Go beyond that. You will hit a blankness. Something like the blankness of deep sleep. But the blankness is also experienced by what? And at that point, use the tenth man story. All of these five sheets you used. Physical, this one. Vital, this one. Mental, I can't show you unless you are a telepath inside. Intellectual, this one. Blank, this one. All of them are objects, five objects. To whom are they appearing? Like the tenth man, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That change has to be done. That is, the, that is one more method of self-inquiry. It's called Panchakosha Viveka, like this. You need not do so much also. Ramana Maharshi would give directly. Take it up. He, he actually mentioned all of them in his talks, all of these methods. Take up any one or take simply take up the I sense and try to follow it back. You say, no, 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 how, how to follow it back? Please give me um, uh, some clear instruction. Who asked that? I asked that. Oh, who said that? Who said that? Don't answer. Look inside. I have found it. Who said that? It, it's Amoga. Un unfailing. It will take you back. One little advanced instruction there. If you seriously follow it, you will come to a blankness, a deep peace, a quietude. Very wonderful. That's what Gaudapada calls Rasaswada, enjoying the bliss of meditation. There also you must ask, to whom is it happening? Uh, uh, to what? Mm. He never said hold on to thy thought. What he says is inquire into thy thought. If you say hold on, it becomes like a mantra. I, I, I. Better to repeat Krishna, Krishna, Krishna rather than I, 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 I. 
and he'll become the greatest egotist ever. No. Hold on, he never meant repeat the I thought. Enquire into it, dig into it. Follow it back. That is the exact meaning of Ekatma Pratyasaram. Shankaracharya says Anusaram. Follow it back. To whom this I thought is coming. Uh-huh. Right. right. So follow it back. Yeah, follow it back. Don't try to answer the question. If you have got an answer to the question, who am I? Purpose is lost. <laughs> you must break through and you realize you are that. Where all questions cease. Not because you have fallen asleep. <laughs> yes. especially like related to Maya so it just seems that like if you're not enlightened if you're not realized yourself like this whole intellectual knowledge is important to at least know what we can get to but how can we actually like realize ourselves so like for example if if we start doing meditation we concentrate our mind try to look at one (coughs) point and everything merges because it just seems that without realizing I personally because I have read books and stuff like I've been trying to meditate for one year it just seems that I have the knowledge, but then when I get to the real world, since I have not realized myself, like I get caught in Maya. Like name and form always catches me, and my whole thing goes out of the window. And then I come back and I can rub herbs and whatever I need when I get back. But then at that point of time, since I have not, like, it, it seems that I have not, I don't know myself, even though like I have this intellectual knowledge which I have gained, which actually is creating more problem than like what I am. <laughs> yeah. So when you come to Vedanta, you have samsara problem. Then when you start Vedantic inquiry, you have samsara problem plus Vedanta problem. <laughs> I have to pay my tax days coming, I have to pay my taxes and have a health insurance, so then I can't find parking. Plus I am not enlightened yet. One more problem. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you something. You are not listening. And it's, it's not uncommon. I have, I have, many of you are nodding, you see. The answer has been told again and again and again. It's right there in front of you. If I show you necklace, bracelet and, um, r- and a tiara. And you say, yeah, I understand intellectually it's gold. But what more practice do I need to do to make it gold? You have not even understood intellectually. The word intellectually understanding is correct, but it's also it can be used as an excuse to push away realization. I have got it, but I immediately uh, categorize it under this is the pigeonhole of intellectual understanding. This is not realization, please, that's intellectual. Now I need something more realization. What do I need? Meditation. I'm trying to meditate, mind is getting concentrated, oh now it's not concentrated. Lifelong, 40 years now, next 40 years, <laughs> try to do that. It's a good exercise. See, the delicate balance has to be there. We cannot dismiss meditation. That would be foolish. Meditation is an excellent exercise. One of the most profitable things to spend your time with. But that's not the point. We started this discussion with great misconception. Great misconception. What is the misconception? Where is the waker? I want to find out the fourth. The Swami, you said fourth self, Turiyam. Now, I am the waker. I understand this much. It is available in waking state. There is the dreamer who was there in my dreams. There is the deep sleeper who I presumably was there in my deep sleep. Now you are telling me there is a fourth one. Then I have to go to the fourth stage. The fourth state apart from waking, dreaming, deep sleep. True or false? False. See, take the gold and ornaments example. There can be three attitudes to it. There is a skeptical materialist's attitude. We know what a materialist is like. It's like somebody saying, necklace, tiara and bracelet, these are real. What you are calling gold is something theoretical, it's superstition. There is no such thing as gold. There is only necklace, tiara and this is the materialist who says, here is the world. Here I am. Matter, energy, time and space. That's it. Atman, Brahman, superstition. That's the materialist approach. Approach one. Problem. Because samsara will never cease then. You you have embraced this much. This much is real. That one superstition. No. It's like embracing the ornament is real but gold is not real. How silly is that? That's one. Second. Second approach is many religious people, dualists. 
it could be dualists uh, like in the different theistic religions of the world who think of some separate god or in a more sophisticated way it could be the dualist of the patanjali yoga or sankhya who seems to think that there is a particular state in which i will be able to find the real self yes i am that ultimate reality but that's available to me only in that one particular state so that person is like somebody says i believe that there is gold but necklace is not gold tiara is not gold bracelet is not gold you melt it into one lump then it will be gold and then into another ornament oh no 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 it's an ornament now your samsara has started gold is gone no the advaitin is one who says in the tiara in the necklace in the um, bracelet you find that exact same gold but you have to disregard the tiara necklace and bracelet is in disregarding is not possible how can you disregard the yogi says the way to disregard is to melt it into a lump of gold wipe it out wipe out samsara in sanskrit it's called pratiti an experience wipe out the experience how can you wipe it out close your eyes no thoughts are going on shut down the mind easier said than done but yoga chitta vritti nirodha calming the movements of the mind is yoga do it then only i am free but the gyani mandukya gaudapada mandukya upanishad says when you are awake you are that fourth right now here here you are that one right now you know i understand it intellectually stop you are pushing away enlightenment by categorizing it as intellectual what is enlightenment it is that intellectual understanding alone deepening into a reality where you yourself confidently will say i am the turiya i am beyond all problems that is the gyana way but if you say you keep saying it swami it is not working for me fine that's why vedanta hinduism in general has a full spectrum antibiotic full spectrum <laughs> all right that one is not working step down meditation yes that's the thing very good i'll tell you how to sit where you keep your hands close your eyes breathe in this way hold your breath in that count release your breath to this much count withdraw the senses concentrate here and there are so many imagine the lotus in this way the light radiating from that the divine face of your ishta devata uh, focus there it's wavering bring it back again and again whole technology of meditation is given until the mind settles down calms down clarity happens oh i am that fourth i was always there i told you so from the beginning <laughs> no that is not happening it's too difficult i fall asleep mind is scattered fine don't close your eyes open your eyes put the picture of sri ram krishna there look at the picture sing the song a worship with flowers put your emotions there love god these are the techniques don't just listen i will tell you. you sit like this here is the mantra repeat it 10000 times in a day morning 2 hours evening 2 hours come back to me after 5 five years <laughs> this is one approach you will experience it even if you don't you will be too scared to say anything more because i might give <laughs> i might increase your <laughs> anyway i'm joking that's one way that is the yogic way for those who are saying i want to have another experience this experience yeah, this is what is this this is waking and this is just everybody has this experience what is spiritual about it all right you want an extraordinary experience that is the yogic way mystical way as distinguished from that you know what vedanta would say to you when you say that wait experience you say are you experiencing something now yeah like my likes and dislikes have changed like no 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 yeah. i'm not talking about that also right now are you experiencing something are you seeing hearing smelling tasting touching yeah you are i'm not experiencing my soul like i still wait 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 again you 
Move slowly, slowly, step by step with me. Are you seeing this pen? Huh? You seeing this pen? Okay, stay with it. You seeing the pen with your eyes? Close your eyes. You're not seeing the pen anymore? Yeah, but I have the vision of that pen so I can see. Fine, but physically you're not seeing when you're... I'm going much more slowly. You're moving much faster than me. You have to slow down. I'm very slow and Vedanta is very slow. Mark Twain used to say, somebody told him to hurry up. And Mark Twain said, I have two speeds, this and slower. <laughs> <laughs> so, slow. When you close your eyes, you're not seeing it. When you open your eyes, you're seeing it. That which you closed and opened, that is your eye. Those are your eyes. Put your attention there. Not theoretically. Actually, physically, feel your eyes. If necessary, close them. If necessary, touch them. You feel your eyes? Yeah. Attention is there? Yeah. Now close your eyes. Inside thoughts are going on? Yeah. Tell me one or two thoughts. <laughs> I'm thinking about what you're saying. I'm thinking about what you're saying. That's the mind. Put your, put your attention there. That's the mind. Put your attention there. I'm thinking about what you are saying. Something is going on there. That is the mind. Alright? Are you with me? And you understand what I'm saying, the English words and what I'm telling you to do. This understanding, that's, just, that's also part of the mind, right? Yes. That understanding is called intellect. It's buddhi. buddhi, yes, very good. That's buddhi. Stay there with the buddhi. Yeah. Try to go, almost like a physical movement, try to go and see what is there beyond the buddhi. <coughs> You'll come to a blankness. Nothing really. If you say beyond the mind, you have a blankness of the mind. Is that true or not? I just see patterns. Okay, patterns. patterns. Alright, random patterns are coming. Keep your eyes closed. Random patterns are coming. To what are they coming? To something the random patterns are coming. To something the mind is say, thinking about the Swami's words. To something the eyes and, are opening and closed. To something the pen was appearing. What is that thing to which the pen appeared, to which the eyes opened and closed, to which the mind was functioning, thinking about Swami's words, to which now random patterns are appearing? What is that? Don't answer. Try to physically be there. Physically means actually be there. I, cannot I, just, don't know. I just don't know is a thought, an effort, a result of your experience that you have reported to me. Very good. What experience that I just don't know? Don't try to give me an answer. Be that. I just don't know. Difficult to express. That's why I said I just don't know. Who saw that it was difficult to express? Gently open your eyes. Do you see how the direction I pointed you in? Follow that. That which to which the patterns were appearing, that which recognized, that which illumined, difficult to explain, difficult to express. That one is the one which, which saw your mind. That one is the one which saw the opening and closing of your eyes. That one is the one which through the opening and closing of the eyes saw the pen. Is that one theoretical? Is this pen intellectual? Are your eyes intellectual or theoretical? Is the mind intellectual or theoretical? Is it a theory? Or do you ex actually experience your mind? Then the one which is experiencing the mind, which you said, I can't express it. That is not a theory. That is not an intellectual thing. It is the most real of all things. It is the gold of the ornaments. Compared to the gold, the ornaments are also theory. The skeptic, the materialist says, your God, Atman is just theory. The enlightened person says, your world is just a theory. <laughs> Nobody has ever seen a world outside consciousness. Dispute it. You can't. Should we stop here? Very good discussion. Thank you. This is how it goes. Actually, this is how teachers... Many of the questions were really what I wanted. Takeaways from this class. Remember the mongoose. 
remember the fact that you have insight already most of us some have not but most of us have got valuable insight remember the fact the advice of ramananda saraswati that prapt gyan ka adar karo learn to respect what you have already got you have got this knowledge some of you have got a mantra from the guru some of you have got devotion in your heart to god in all the paths you have got something already spiritual respect that use it call it up like the mongoos whenever the cobra of of maya uh, scares you makes you suffer any kind of suffering in life apply it immediately this last question <laughs> so what experience this all what's the name of that name of that it is unnameable it is you it is i it is the self it is turiyam whatever name you give it no use giving it names no use giving it names you have to notice it and you realize you are it right now suppose you ask the question who is experiencing all this what's your name anil anil you say who is experiencing all this the obvious answer to you to yourself you will say anil i anil i'm experiencing this the next question will be what am i what is anil is anil a body then the whole process will start is anil the prana is anil the mind is anil the buddhi will go deeper and deeper and deeper until the name anil it will point to something deep inside you which cannot be named but you will realize it by yourself that is the self okay good point to end yes we'll do that definitely we'll finish it by the will of god by the wish of god <laughs> prayer the blessings of god we will come convene to finish the this will start again next session not this session even the lamps are burning out <laughs> om shanti 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 hari hi om tat sat shri ram krishna rupanam astu